Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence. And the painting I'm bringing you today is uh, it's an a, a entry into our Umber series. It's called Umber Series, Country Road. Now, Country Road's a title you know I've used before, but uh, it works great for this. And uh, we'll just put the prefix Umber Series. Um, colors used in this, uh, Yellow Ochre raw umber, burnt umber, uh, lead white. That would be all of the colors used. And um, this was probably the first one in the series where I started leaning into that yellow ochre. I had kind of I had done a little bit of like a transparent earth yellow in some of the earlier ones, but um, this one I decided full on get into some yellows. And that's what I did. Reds and yellows. Uh, one thing I'm not doing in this, this series is uh, burnt sienna because it's really, really red. And um, I mean, it's not red compared to cad red, but it's really red compared to the other earth pigments. So, about as red as I'm going is the um, the burnt umber. Yeah. Now, this was painted on a pine panel, and uh, you can tell. You can tell. Uh, I kind of ran out of pine panels. I have some in the garage, but I ran out of prepped pine panels. And so I'm um, finishing off the uh, series on... Um, oh, I say finishing off. I don't know when that'll be. Because I've got a bunch of really cool scenes I want to paint, and um, I'm going to paint them. Uh, you'll notice this one features like a barn, house, whatever, pretty prominently for me. Ah, what the heck, you know. It, it, it needed to be there. It would have been pretty boring without it. I will say, though, that the uh, in the reference photo, uh, although it was distant, it was a, had some weird angles and things on it, uh, which I simplified. Um, and uh, no time like the present, since I'm getting new members every day. Um, no time like the present to mention that you definitely want to simplify things in your painting. You definitely don't want to get hung up on what the actual reference is doing or looks like. Um, that said, uh, you, that's said with a caveat, and that if you're quite inexperienced, um, I would maybe spend some time drawing the scene, um, even separately on a piece of paper, figuring out things, figuring out how, how you want to simplify things, so you're not like just floating out there in the void. Um, because with experience you really learn what to leave out and what's not going to serve the painting what people do 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 not and will not care about that's really the thing you want to strip out the stuff that that no one's going to care about the uh the inessential the non the non-essential um and uh accentuate the um those those elements that are creating the scene and really uh, those elements that sparked something in you uh, that made you say, "Oh, I think I think that would be a good painting." Well, a lot of times we don't even really we're not really you know we have this idea of that one, that would make a good painting, but we don't really go far enough. I think when we're starting out into the why 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 would it make a good painting? What is it about this scene that you think would make a good painting? And now there's a couple couple things you can do a couple strategies one is if you're using looking at your reference on a computer or anything like that shrink it down to like thumbnail size so you can really see what the important elements are because those are the things that are going to de determine whether it's a good painting or not the big shapes um, the big contrasts the big uh, movements of color and changes of color things like that so um, I know I say this all the time, but it's really, I think, one of the main things that painters getting uh, started uh, on get hung up on. And not just painters getting started out, I was getting hung up on it for, you know, five, six years in. So that's a message I w could, have, uh, could have done with hearing um, and, um, and putting into action in my work. So that's one reason I stress it as much as I do. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, too, when I'm sitting here, I mean, I did this painting maybe a week ago, a week and a half, something like that. I'm going off of recollections of things. And uh, one of the reasons I like the smaller sizes is that it really, you know, with a, with a brush the size I'm using here, 
you know, maybe with a little fine sable brush I could start getting crazy with detail, but um, I don't have room to over detail things. And I already know I'm going to change all kinds of things around. I mean, I changed a lot in this painting, in this reference. And uh, that leads me to say, um, check out the uh, live video in the members area. You get to the members area by going down to uh, any of my videos. There's a join button. You click on that and you're in. You're in like Flynn. It's uh, six bucks a month and you can exit out any time and you have access to maybe I don't know, there's got to be at least a hundred live videos now some of them are up to eight hours <laughs> eight hours long but uh, you know you're there you're there with me for the for the whole sometimes torturous process usually you know I always say uh, in fact if you've talked to me in the email you probably have heard the uh, I always you know say the struggles real or I'll end my uh, correspondence with that statement because the struggle is real and when I say that it's in the positive sense of struggle not the negative sense you know I think this struggle is real and it is um, uh, it's worth it you know it's worth it because is well in fact I was talking with somebody um, in um, uh, email correspondence recently and uh, I'd mentioned uh, to them you know this concept which I've brought up on the channel before um, many of you uh, may or may not be aware that I was a commercial illustrator for a good 13 years say from uh, from 97 to about uh, 2010 11 and uh, I had got that job because I was very proficient with all of the computer programs and I got into computer programs because I wanted to color my black my, my black line artwork I was into doing um, brush and ink and pen and ink work and wanted to color it and um, I uh, had been learning to draw for ages and, and perfecting my drawing and then the computer era came around and I saw some of the cool things that people were doing with coloring and I wanted to get into that and um, I can say that uh, you know since that time in the uh, mid 90s um, when I first started getting into computers there's all kinds of cool stuff that's very very easy to do click of a button and it looks pretty cool you know um, I will say that one thing that still hasn't happened and this is you know 25 years ago now right um, we still haven't got any program that's going to make a great painting from a photo you know all it can do is make it look a little brushy but it won't do these uh, it won't know what to eliminate it won't know what to accentuate it won't know what to make bigger what to make smaller all it can do is apply a certain style or surface to that photograph and thus the uh, the uh, visual art that you're creating will always hang on to its photographic status no matter what you do to it and I don't really anticipate that going away anytime soon because um, I'm getting to my point. Just be patient. Um, what I was saying to the uh, lovely gentleman that um, I was uh, corresponding with was that it's actually really a good thing how hard, how difficult painting is because if you if you put the hours in, you put the time in. Um, not only will at the end of that process will you end up being uh, an artist that does uh, something that's unique because it's representative of your personal struggle, your personal evolution, but it's not going to be something that someone could, uh, some computer could replace with the push of a button. It's not possible, and it won't be possible. I won't say ever, but just knowing what I've gone through, there's so many factors, there's so much involved with making a good picture. Um, it's going to be a while before uh, you are replaceable. Now, the downside is is that as we progress on down the lane, there's, you know, maybe less and less uh, reverence for the visual image as there used to be. Uh, and I've brought this up in the channel before too, but in the old days, you know, people didn't even have like uh, a Bible or anything. It was, you know, 600 years ago uh, when the Gutenberg press was invented. Prior to that, if you were to see any visual imagery um, other than something you might, you know, draw with a piece of chalk on, a, on, a, on some kind of surface uh, or charcoal or whatever, 
uh, you, you went to the church you would see the imagery there you know and there was a reverence for that and um, often of course it was a reverent imagery um, but images were produced only for the very wealthy and then even as we moved on down the lane you had books uh, become available to the common person and they had illustrations and uh, um, magazines became popular etc we get into the the great age of illustration in the late 1800s you know um, where you could start to see some some basic like color reproduction become available like lith lithographs and things like that um, we've gone from that point in time where a an image in color would be treated with respect to where now we are bombarded with hundreds and thousands of images on a daily basis on our screens um, they go uh, the, the television screen the computer screen your phone they go flying by and some of them are astoundingly beautiful images but we look at them we move on of course we do because there's another image just around the bend and uh, you know I can lament that that, that status um, and in fact my me becoming a landscape painter is a reaction to this phenomenon and I'll tell you I'll tell you why because I was in the image creating business um, I was doing images that were used on t-shirts and other products and um, uh, you know sometimes really cool images too but um, everything that comes out of a computer even if it's a hand created image I could spend as much time working on a, a painting in the computer as I do on a on a canvas or a board um, it's all very reproducible it's all very ephemeral when you spend time creating a painting you're not just creating an image you are creating an object you're creating something that's one of a kind and whether people around you uh, are acknowledging how special that is you know or whether what you're creating is actually super special to look at it's still one of a kind you know and you'll no start noticing even with your own work you know as you progress on down the lane you won't be able to reproduce the paintings that you did when you were starting out you, the, you, you, and you'll do a few good ones you know but you won't paint like that those will be one of a kind you could go in and paint that same image again um, but it won't be the same painting it's one of a kind okay so it's an art object it's an artifact and it's an image so that to me was a big win and one of the reasons why I moved away from the digital uh, media being a, an end in itself and uh, really just became a part of my process and by that I say I will do some things to manipulate my photo reference prior to painting but it's all just you know sometimes it can be quite garish and ugly um, because it's all about feeding um, the, the painting it's all about creating a unique uh, and interesting work of art that is also an artifact an art object and uh, it becomes a family heirloom it becomes something uh, of significance that that goes well past you and your image making process you know it's a uh, uh, it, as it hangs on the wall in people's homes uh, it takes on a certain weight and gravity uh, of the family life that goes on around it you know not to get too esoteric but um, this is pretty significant stuff you know by the way we're just about done with this video I wanted to point out that this painting I did struggle a bit and you might notice I almost never scrape out but if you go back about two or three minutes um, and I was in the middle of riffing on wrapping or whatever but uh, I scraped out a lot of stuff with my knife I almost never do that but I found I was getting caught up in this painting and as uh, at, at the end of the session I was like oh, I don't know about this you know and again check out the live video you'll hear it but um, where I'm at with this painting now is I really like it I think it looks really nice and uh, I've been appreciating uh, it in my studio and um, I'm real glad I'm doing it anyway getting close to the end here like I say you can join the members there you can tip on over to my website uh, there's a, a big fat uh, donation button there there's some paintings for sale there as well and uh, yeah there you go 
thanks for uh, giving me your time and attention today if uh oh by the way i was going to say if you are a member you want access to this reference image the uh the pictorialist photo that i used all you're going to do is drop me an email and i'll shoot it off to you so um until i come back with another video presentation for your edification and pleasure um please do me a solid do me a favor take good care of yourself and all your loved ones try and love your enemies stay out of trouble <laughs>